So My Hero Academia Chapter 270 has finally come out after a two-week hiatus due to, you know, the break that it was on. And my god, was this one of the best chapters I've seen. Horikoshi has been nailing it with this arc. Each chapter has been better than the last, in my opinion. Maybe one dud, possibly, but other than, but I, I don't think I'll see it that way. It's been almost like 10 chapters, over 10 chapters for this arc, and I am really enjoying it right now. There has been no low points to this arc whatsoever, and this chapter has just been way better than I thought it was going to be, especially with the cl somewhat cliffhanger ending from the previous uh, chapter. So, where should I get started? Well, obviously this chapter starts off right after what happened in the previous chapter where President Mike used, used his powers to shatter the, t the tube that Shigaraki was in for his surgery and punching the doctor square in the face. And Shigaraki being presumably dead because of how the surgery was going to be like. The doctor ended up putting Shigaraki in like a death-like state where his heart stopped and stopped, see, brain attack to be stopped and stuff like that. It was a state of near death. And he said that he had a machine to, you know, be, as, to act as an, the, 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 I can't say the word, defibrillator, defibrillator to, you know, restart his heart. So this chapter starts off with President Mike grabbing Ujiko and running to the other side of the lab to try and get him out of there. While, and, 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 while telling x last the eye gun hero, who, let's face it, he's going to, he, he's dead. He's just dead. That, that guy's going to die. He's, he's a pointless character. He's just there for like, you know. Shock value, possibly. But anyway, so he, when he's about to pick up Sugar Rock, he's like, he notices the machine in the back. He's like, those tubes probably acted as a buffer to protect the main computer. He's like, I should destroy it. But as we all know, that's not going to happen. But anyway, we cut back to present Mike as he's running with a doctor. The doctor is freaking out, and he's kind of like confessing everything to, um, uh, President Mike. Specifically, we actually, we mostly get his backstory. So it's like, so we knew that he was the one that created the quirk, the quirk uh, apocalypse theory, the, what was it called? The quirk singularity. He was the one that came up with the theory of the quirk singularity. He's like, 70 years ago, 70 years ago was when this theory came to be. So this was a good, good amount of time after quirks started to come across the world. He stated that his when he presented his theory, he was mocked and laughed out of the scientific community and exiled, so to speak. He's like, his theory lacked evidence, but also the fact that since quirks were being more and more widespread, more people getting powers and, you know, messing with society in general so they can get a handle on all these different people with different powers, how to, how to help everyone better handle this, you know, setting up the hero system, everything. And, and they're like, we don't want to know, we don't want people to start panicking over a possible doomsday theory that you have cooked up that could happen in the far off future. So, yeah. Understandably, yeah, a lot of people are going to be upset, won't want this to come out. President Mike says that this theory is more like a cult like belief. There are people in the world of My Hero Academia that all know about this cult, uh, not cult, this whole theory. So, it's widespread. It's not much fact yet, but it is possible. We've seen this with the guy from Shuketsu that can turn people into, like, meatballs. Saying that, basically stated as absolute fact. And we've seen this with these new kids. And it is a valid concern. So, President Mike ends up stating that the person that made this theory, at this point, will be like, a, will be like over a, roughly 120 years old. And that's when we get to hear... Um, what Ujiko's quirk really is. It's called life force or vitality. Essentially, it doubles his life his life um, expectancy to that double it doubles his life essentially, the extension of his life. It doubles how long he can live, but at the cost of his physical movement, his vitality. His uh, yeah, his physical movement. So he can't really do anything like he couldn't play sports. He couldn't be good in combat situations, which for a guy like Ujiko. He does, in fact, only focus on the scientific aspect of things. So it is a valid trade-off, a very fair trade to be like, okay, I can live a lot longer if I just give up my ability to you know, move like an athlete or even fight myself. 
that's perfectly fine. I do my research. That's all I really need to do. And he's a scientist, so it makes sense. But then he also goes on to goes on to say that once he was laughed out of that community. Oh, here, one thing he needs to state is that as Ujiko is confessing everything to Professor Mike, he's growing more and more disgusted with the man, and just hates being around him. He's filling up with anger and disgust for this guy, and I don't blame him. Especially later down the road, he says something that really gets that will really get on his nerves. But anyway, Doctor Ujiko does end up stating one specific thing, which I'll get back to later down the road. I'm going through this in a type of order the, the chapter went. So after basically talking, telling about his quirk how got, and how everything with the quirk singularity theory, we cut to some of Mindscape, and we see Shigaraki in a standing on a plat on a platform in a distorted world with like crumbling buildings with a bunch of hands all over the place. Basically, to represent most likely to represent everything Shigaraki has ever destroyed with his decaying quirk. As this is going on, and he's questioning where the hell is he, he sees his sister, Hana, basically apologizing to him about what she did, like going to her father, not defending Shigaraki after going into the his father's study to find Nana's, Nana Shimura's picture, his grandmother. He's like, that thing, I already forgot. It doesn't matter anymore. I already... And, and then his mom goes up and be like, do you still want to be a hero? And she's like, with your eyes, don't scratch your eyes. It'll bother them. So he's basically flashing back to everyone that cared about him. He knew that his mother and his sister cared about him. Just some stuff happened. So from all this going on, it does kind of seem that he's forgiven them. And we do see Shigaraki turn back into his to him, how he was as a kid. But as a mixture of how he was as a kid along with his adult-like features. Like, you know, with, a scar on his, with, a scar, with his scars and, you know, crusted up face. Then we get to see his father show up in his dream world, be like, he went to my study, study, all anger like, and he goes out to reach to him. But then Shigaraki go, turns around with a look of a diabolical smile, puts his hands up, and decays the, the image of his father, and practically kills him again. And it's then that Shigaraki goes back to how he was. Then, we see an image of all for one, in the distance, looking like a vessel, one of, looking like Kuro Giri, as what um, uh, Shigaraki said. He said, "Master, you look like Kuro Giri." He's like, "Come to me, my boy." So once we see this, uh, Shigaraki is about to go straight towards All for One, most likely the vestige of All for One. So he starts moving towards him, and then all his family members, in his mind, start to grab him like. Every single one of them grabbed specific parts of his body that he had those hands as you know as part of his costume. And now even Nana Shimura shows up with her hand on the back of the head, which symbolized that one of the hands that all for one gave to Shigaraki was that of his grandmother. And all of that was were the hands of his family. Family members. The the one on his face was in fact his father's. <sighs> yes. So ev everything had a purpose. Everything had a purpose. Horikoshi for child everything. So after trying to hold him back, Nana's like, never forget. And, and Shigaraki's, like, you know, and then we get to see an image of him as a kid with his eyes filled with hope of becoming a hero someday. But then he's like, enough. And everything starts to decay. He starts, as he completely and utterly accepts his fate as the next symbol of terror, a symbol of destruction, a symbol of fear, the ultimate villain. And he starts walking to all for one as, it, as he's saying, don't deny me anymore. We cut back to the doctor stating that the quirk that he has, his life force quirk, is nothing but a copy. The original was given to all for one. He then states that he basically sees all for one as something like a living god. So yeah, that shows how much pull this guy has. He, uh, this guy has a buttload of charisma to convince a man of science like that. I mean, all for one has... Bunch of had a bunch of followers. The Gantomaki has bent to his will. He'll do anything for all for one. But that's not the biggest bombshell here. The next piece of information we got was that all for one, see, knowing that he was going to end up being defeated, made a copy of the all for one quirk for himself and gave the already gave the original to Shigaraki. Which means right now Shigaraki has all for one 
and every single quirk that has been stockpiled into it. And just like that, once Sugar Rocky finally accepts all for one, one of the tubes of, that has electricity on it sp manages, to, manages to touch the water that Sugar Rocky is currently somewhat submerged in, and it basically shocks him back to, starts shocking him back to life. We then cut to the end of the chapter, where Deku, Bakugo, Uraraka, Todoroki, and Nedre are evacuating the citizens from the city. But all of a sudden, Deku is stopped in the middle of the street. A voice in his head saying, like, he's coming. He's coming. Like a warning. Most likely it's Nana Shimura. Basically, due to the connection between All for One and All for One. You know, since, they were, since One for All was made from All for One. So it's possible that he can sense Shigaraki's awakening. So, yeah. So this whole chapter solidified not just Shigaraki's flaw in development to be the ultimate villain of the series. It confirmed a bunch of stuff that we've had speculated for a long time. Hell, All for One planned for himself to be defeated. He knew it was going to be defeated, so he prepared by making a copy of his quirk for himself and having the original passed on to Shigaraki. This also helps confirm that the Doctor has been copying quirks, which is how all of the Nomus have been getting these quirks, even if, let's say, some people are alive. The Doctor also said that, um, uh, I forgot to mention this as he was, you know, talking to President Mike, but he did state that you, your Colonel Geary's friend, to be honest, I wasn't, I was planning to get er the Erasure quirk before. So does this confirm that Ujiko and All for One were aiming to try and get uh, Aizawa's quirk, but, but Shirokumo managed to get in the way somehow. So they get where they grab Shirokumo. I mean, it worked out for them. But that is somewhat of a weird time to say this. To have someone say this. And honestly, I do feel like Shigaraki might actually go, I want his awakening to probably go after Aizawa next. If he goes after a racer head, he could since all for one can forcibly remove a quirk, all he needs to do is get onto Aizawa really quickly without him looking at him or using his quirk and take Aizawa's power for himself. Making Aizawa quirkless, but also giving him the ability to just look at someone and negate their powers. That'll make Shigaraki as OP as he possibly could. Which is insane. But yeah. This chapter was amazing. We got Shigaraki's development fully, fully completed, and confirm, confirmation that he has the original All for One quirk that was already passed down to him, confirmation of Ujiko of U, pretty much Ujiko's age, and how long that he's been working with All for One. Not to mention he did give that quirk to All for One since he himself has a copy of his own quirk in him, and Deku. Managing to sense Shigaraki's awakening. This arc just just got even better. I can't wait to see what happens next. But with all that said, what do you think is going to happen next? How do you think this will play out? Do you think Shig when Shigaraki wakes up, he'll just eradicate all the heroes? Or do you think he's going to do something to like state a point? Will he steal Aizawa's quirk to make himself even more, more powerful and OP? And how will Deku react to the situation. Well, that's something we'll have to wait a week, thank God, thank goodness. But there's not going to be any another hiatus or break for my hero, so next week we will get answers to what's going to happen next. So with all that said, I hope you guys have an awesome day, and I'll see you around.